It is a time-honored tradition of Super Bowl week. Hey, the door knock welcoming the newest selectees to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Coach, just a knock on the door. In a normal year, in the Super Bowl host city, Hall of Fame President David Baker visits football legends in their hotel rooms, delivering the news that changes their lives forever. Welcome to camp. Yeah! But this is not a normal year. I'm Jim Fabio, the producer of Hall of the Hall of Fame Knock. My role was to lead a large production effort toward documenting and capturing David Baker traveling by uh, a private jet in a very COVID safe and compliant manner around the United States, bringing that door knock that says, hey, you've gotten into the Hall of Fame to this year's class at their own homes or wherever we might have found them. It's pretty exciting uh, to be a part of this project. There's a lot of moving parts. Uh, it's way out of the norm for the way that we, the NFL Network, the Hall of Fame, NFL Honors have done this in the past. So it's challenging, but it's kind of fun. We've got a good plan and we're trying to pull it off. The two biggest things that kept me up at night were one, uh, someone testing positive and contracting the coronavirus during the shoot. Two was us getting off schedule because uh, of all the moving parts. Um, and that was driven by the uh, flight crews crew day schedule. You know, they only have a 12 hour day and we had to make our shoot day in two cities a day. And we didn't have much maneuverability there. We, we had to be pretty much time on target each step of the way. A little bit of wiggle room, but really not much. When you're trying to surprise someone, you got to have an insider. You've got to have somebody who helps you set up the surprise. In the case of Peyton Manning, we made a connection to his camp through a producer who produces his show for ESPN Plus, Peyton's Places. He had some voiceover line a session to do with Peyton there. He said, I will get Peyton to come over to the stadium and you guys can surprise him there. We're going to try to find and make his moment in return for all the great moments that he's made for us. Uh, so let's go get it and let's not screw it up, guys. So ended up talking with Peyton's wife and she had some designs and thoughts on how um, Peyton would probably really like it if we were able to get a hold of people from his football journey. Okay, here we go. It's a beautiful day to change somebody's life and deliver life-changing news. At the first stop on his door knocks journey, David Baker gets a little help sharing that good news with one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. The NFL debut of Peyton Manning. Manning will throw the deep ball. The Colts are world champions for the first time since 19. Manning out of the gun. Let's it fly. It's caught by Thomas. There's the record for Peyton Manning. You're looking at a living legend right now. We are trying to surprise Peyton Manning uh, to let him know about his Hall of Fame induction and uh, got some special guests for him, so it's going to be fun. And so we're going to do sort of two takes of each of these. One will be tight like this, and then we'll clear out and get something wide. What's that say? Big news? OK, all right. Big news. My show, Peyton's Places, is getting bigger. And I've recruited some friends to take you on a journey through the sports they love best. Sign up exclusively at ESPNplus.com. What are you looking at? What the heck is going on here, <laughs> guys? Corner hammer. I knew, so, I knew, so, Corner I knew, there, was, I knew there was some kind of blitz coming. We <laughs> tried to tell them about your peripheral vision. Is that right? From the very beginning, the most prepared football player, the most prepared man I've ever known. Uh, you've been incredible as a friend, and you're incredible for our great game of football. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate that very much. So, <laughs> so. Well, you know that uh, I'm here representing all your former coaches at Tennessee, your, certainly your teammates that uh, love you and adore you and you were a big part of the winningest era in modern Tennessee football 
history, but you mean so much more than that to everybody in the state of Tennessee. And we thank you for the man that you are. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. And I'm representing uh, Indianapolis and our first uh, Super Bowl there. And as we said in our very first meeting, if all we do is win Super Bowls, it won't be enough. We've got to make Indianapolis a better place to live, and you helped do that and set the tone, and I thank you for that. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it very much. There's this old saying uh, in coaching that when your best player is your hardest worker, obviously it sets a great tone for the rest of the team, and you did that indeed for us. Thanks very great much. Great statesman. Thank you, man. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, bud, I, I didn't get to spend as much time with you as these guys did, but the time I did spend with you was special. And I'm here on behalf of the Denver Bronco organization, your teammates, to say thank you. I know what you went through to bring a third world championship to this city. And thank you for That's that. Good. Thank you very much. Well, we really were trying to it. surprise you, and it didn't, <laughs> didn't come work. out very well, but we've got one more person here with a little surprise uh -oh. for you. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dave. I know you're a great lover of the history of the game. I want to thank you for all you've done for the game. And I want to welcome you to Canton, Ohio, where I promise you we will keep your legacy alive forever. Welcome really to Canton. Appreciate it, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you all. For... You got me. You got me. <laughs> hey, 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 did y'all know this was coming? Huh? Hey. Huh? Hey. Y'all did? I thought y'all just wanted to get out of school and come with me today. That too. Huh? <laughs> My football journey, it really has been about the people that have been a part of it. To have these coaches is very special and really appreciate Dave and uh, you guys and the team, you know, trying to make it very special during these uh, strange times. And uh, my wife, Ashley, I know was, was the quarterback behind the scenes on this and I have my kids here. And so I'm glad they got to be here for it. So yeah, very cool, very special day. I was certainly surprised as to how I found out I mean, my antennas were up a little bit just because uh, some people had kind of hinted that it was going to be a little different this year. But the fact that all the coaches that have been a part of my football life, it was a special way to find out and had a great chance for me to spend some time with those coaches. I'm, I'm glad that one wasn't at the end. You know, that one had a lot, a lot, a lot more moving parts to it. And so getting that, getting that one out of the way made it feel pretty good about the next several days. Thank y'all. Good luck. Y'all got to get some, y'all got to get some miles in these next uh, few weeks. We shot with Peyton around noon mountain time and we needed to be at Calvin Johnson's door by 8 p.m. Eastern time. From the Mile High City to the Motor City, David Baker and his crew are headed to Detroit to surprise one of the most decorated players in Lions franchise history. I'll tell you folks, I have never in my lifetime seen a receiver with more God-given ability than Calvin Johnson. Looking at he's got Calvin Johnson. It's never a bad option to throw it to Calvin Johnson, even if he's covered. Oh, baby, he did it again. Mega try into the record books. The single season all time NFL receiving yardage record. Calvin Johnson uh, didn't know. The, the insider was his wife. So we had seven vehicles coming from the airport to Calvin's home. On, on, the, on the map, before we got there, I instructed everyone where to pull up and stop. We got out of the cars, and then we all marched in a single file line and about a block down so we wouldn't tip off Calvin by being right next to his home. It is a little past 8 o'clock, and it's cold here on the outskirts of Detroit here in Michigan. It's late, but it's never too late to change a life. Right here. Ready? Calvin, yes. David Baker from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> are, are you, are, am I disturbing you? Come on out here. Step out here, Calvin. I, we got to do this outside. Oh. Uh, okay. I told my wife. I'm like, well, who is at my door? I see a bunch of people out here. <laughs> this, this is not. This, this, this is too much, man. Hey, Calvin. Um, we couldn't get everybody to the Super Bowl this year to knock on the door there. 
So we came to your house to knock on your door. <laughs> and I, I want you to understand, for you and Brittany and for Calvin the Third, and who's your puppy here? Willow. Willow. Willow, Willow the beautiful puppy, okay? <laughs> yeah, and let's get Calvin the Third out here, too. Come here, boy. Come here. Come, Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. On behalf of everybody who loves this game and the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I want to welcome you to Canton, Ohio, <laughs> where we want to guard your legacy and thank you for all you've done for this great game. For sure. For all you're going to do for the game and for all you've meant to the game. Uh -huh. um, we are very yeah, serious man. about guarding your legacy there forever, OK? Yes, sir. A and uh, you're going to get a bronze bust, a gold jacket, a Hall of Fame <laughs> ring of excellence. And I'm told that bronze bust will last for 40,000 years, <laughs> OK? So you better make sure it's got that <laughs> smile that you're smiling with right now. No, okay? I got tears on my face. <laughs> Overwhelmed with emotion right now. Um, excited, dream, dream come true. Like for real, can't even. I, I can't even think of this happening any other way. Going to going down any other way. Um, big surprise ever so far for me. <laughs> I'll probably be sleeping with the smile tonight. You know, it just makes you want to keep on living right and paying it forward, and 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 good things happen like this. You know, you know, just keep stacking good days on top of good days. You know, it ain't always gonna be perfect. As long as you're striving for perfection, you know you, you're going to be all right. It had crossed my mind that sneaking up on a person's house at night is not necessarily always the uh, most prudent thing to do. And so uh, we were not uh, quite SEAL Team 6 getting to his front door. And he noticed that there were people gathering outside. And when he finally answered that door knock, he did remark at some point when he was talking to us uh, that he was, you know, concerned because there were these people coming to his house in the middle of the evening. Okay. I told him, I was like, I don't know, who does have a door? I see a bunch of people out here. I can't blame Calvin for wondering who these people are gathering on my front doorstep, but he couldn't have been more gracious once he opened the door. Okay, football fans, it's still cold here in Detroit. The sun just came up. It's early morning. We're about to jump on a jet. Next stop, Virginia Beach. It's day two of the Pro Football Hall of Fame Door Knocks Tour. David Baker leaves snowy Detroit for the warmer climbs of Virginia Beach, where a nine-time Pro Bowl lineman will receive a long-awaited knock. One of the NFL's best offensive lines as a group, and maybe their best individual, Alan Fanica. Great job by Fanica kicking out the backer. Unbelievable play. Alan Fanica made a heck of a block. Did you see him pull and get that block that sprung Parker? That's why he may be the best guard in the league. Hey, brother. You mind stepping out here for just a second? Yeah. Hey, buddy. Uh, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. Uh, and you told me this was the year. And I wanted you to know that on behalf of all of us who love the game and the Pro Football Hall of Fame and 326 other Hall of Famers, it is my great privilege to welcome you to Canton, Ohio, to thank you for all you've done for the game, Alan, for all that you're going to do for the game and to promise you that we'll keep your legacy to the game alive and Canton forever. That sounds good to me. How do you feel, buddy? <laughs> I feel good, man. I good. feel good. Good. Yeah. Stella. You got me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> family got me. <laughs> uh, they got me with the surprise. Um, I, I think this was six. I feel like I've been to five uh, waiting. Uh, so, uh, you know, it is a relief uh, to, uh, to get in and, and move on and uh, uh, enjoy some of those things that we've been going to the Super Bowl luncheons and hearing about. And you know, it's kind of like a peek behind the curtain. And, uh, but uh, you never get to go behind the curtain. And now I am. So Alan Fanica's house in Virginia Beach, um, his wife was the insider and the people inside the house were his family, 
and some had come in from out of state. I don't know what the story was that his wife told him as to why they were there, but uh, that's why they were there. Come in here, you sneakers. Come in here, yeah. Julie, my wife, Julie knew uh, the night before. She even told me, you know, we're going to bed. She's like, you know, what? If, she's trying to throw me off the scent. She goes, she goes, she goes, what if you don't get in? And I was like, well, should we just start drinking right now? I mean, what the <laughs> hell? You know, what's, you know? After David's initial moment with Alan, uh, we take a little break. Uh, somewhere in there, uh, there was talk of, and maybe he said it when he was initially talking to David about, it. He'll, he'll talk to his dad, he'll call his dad later, he's trying to get him on FaceTime or something. And when I heard that, I thought, oh boy, if he's going to call his dad right after this, I wonder if he'd let us film that, if he'd do it outside, because we weren't allowed to go into his house. So just ask him to sit out on the front stairs and, and make that call. Can you hear me, Dad? I sure can, Dad. <laughs> What do you think of this? It's awesome, man. It's awesome. I'm so happy to call you, pal. So happy. Thank you, pal. I know. I know. You were pretty excited. I didn't get to see your face, but I, I bet you was pretty excited, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they they got me. They uh, they tricked me pretty good. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm shaking a little bit. I can't. Uh, <laughs> I haven't uh, absorbed it yet. I can't tell you how proud I am of you as a, as a as a man, as a person, and, and a football player. I love you, Dad. I love you, too. You have a great day and do some celebrating, yeah? I Not will. too much, but do a little bit. I will, pal. I will. I'll call you later, too, you. okay? I love you. Yeah. yeah, tell everybody hello. I love you, too, son. Bye-bye. Bye. I just got a text from uh, Coach Tony Dungy. It says, great being with you yesterday. That was very special. And Peyton was thrilled. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. I was the driver of Van 1. We had to be pods of three and four, right? So we had seven of us. We had we required by the league to have two vans. I wanted David Baker in one van with camera and audio. And I wanted to be in that van. So there's nobody left. Who's going to drive the van? Jim's driving the van. So that's why I'm producing, driving, navigating, and potentially even on the phone with someone coordinating what's going on. And, you know, okay, David, let's talk about this. And, you know, whenever you're ready, I'm monitoring his takes. <laughs> we were juggling, we were juggling. From Virginia, Baker and his crew are headed south to Central Florida and another first ballot Hall of Famer. Okay, here we are in Orlando. We're just about to sneak in on one of the greatest defensive backs in the history of the game. Oh, Charles Woodson with an electric interception. Pick six, Charles Woodson. He's one of the best right now. Most instinctive, gifted football players I've ever seen, Charles Woodson. Intercepted by a flying Charles Woodson. He is Superman. And now do we hand him to the, the Defensive Player of the Year award? Some thought went into trying to spice up the door knocks a bit instead of just knocking on the door and notifying each person uh, seven in a row. I uh, Like you saw with Peyton Manning, uh, to have a ruse, something that may, might already involve cameras. So we, we see the reaction. We're already... We've already got a camera right on him for that reaction. So the thought was to ask Charles to do an interview at his house in his backyard for the AFC NFC Championship weekend um, for Fox. He gives some sound bites about his experience playing as a player in championship games. And so that was the that was the cover for our local crew to already be in touch with him and set up on his back patio next to the pool uh, with a dummy camera and then the actual camera looking like a second camera. A couple other, we had, we had behind the scenes cameras, we had iPhones going, we had Osmos. I mean, if there's a camera made that is small and portable, and if there was a crew member around who wasn't actively doing something else, it seemed like everybody was shooting something. The DP sent us a sketch of what it looks like, David. 
That's Charles sitting down. That's the camera pointed at him. So you'll be behind him. And Andy will so be that, where? So that this camera, Andy's going to pull around to your right Fire shoulder break. that okay. way, okay. looking at Charles. Okay, great. Make sense? Okay. Great. Okay. Let's go. What's your favorite memory from winning your NFC Championship game? A lot of great memories, uh, of course. Um, you know, one of the great ones was uh, B.J. Raji when he got the interception. That was uh, that was pretty cool. But you know, just winning the game, and uh... <laughs> how you doing, Charles? Sorry to interrupt your interview, oh, but I was trying to knock on the front door, and nobody was answering. Okay. So now I'm starting to think y'all was in on. <laughs> Come on in here, Mom. You can get in here, too. Georgia. You know, you're one of the greatest players ever. And on behalf of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, it's my pleasure to welcome you to Canton. And also to promise you that we will keep your legacy to the game there, not just the player you are, but the man you are forever. Congratulations. But I can't believe you're standing here at my house right now, man. I can't <laughs> well, it's a... I, I got to talk to my friends at Fox, man. They set me up, man. But this, this was a, a pleasant surprise. And I can't believe you didn't, you, you ain't tell me nothing. <laughs> Congratulations, Daddy. We in the hall, man. Yes, you are. Oh, man, this is, <laughs> this is unbelievable. Man, I told myself I wouldn't go cry. <laughs> I told myself I wouldn't go cry. <laughs> he doesn't cry much. I've seen him cry probably two times since I've known him. But never like that. I mean, he, the water works, he let it go. He's a hardworking man, hardworking, very disciplined in anything he does. He deserves it. He deserves it. He really does. Do I dream about it? I did. But uh, the dream just actually became a reality today. So, unreal. David Baker's Hall of Fame door knock tour reaches day three and an early morning flight from the East Coast to the West Coast. We're gonna surprise one of the greatest safeties in the history of the game, all around great Hall of Fame guy. He's been a finalist eight times, seven previous times. I had to call him and say, I hope I'm calling you with better news next year. This is the year, it's gonna be great. When you have a private jet and it's sitting at the airport and the pilot says, Jim, whatever you need, just call me on my cell. And, you know, hey, we're, we're, you know, we're five minutes behind. And he says, whatever, you know, whatever you need, they were there for us. Um, so, boy, I wish we'd have had a little bit more time to enjoy the fact that we were on this beautiful, luxurious private jet. But um, boy, it was kind of a utility vehicle for us. <laughs> Just the most efficient way to get our small crew and David Baker from place to place as quickly as possible and as safely as possible. The cross country trip lands him on the doorstep of a player who has achieved excellence on the field and in the front office. If you are looking at the safety of his generation, it is John Lynch. intercepted and here comes Lynch. Standard door knock. We're going for the front door right here. Big area there near the front door. Why don't we line up here? The setup at John Lynch's house, uh, again, the insider was John's wife and um, she kept the secret. He had no idea. We've got seven cars with us because we've got a lot of camera crews. And if you don't mind, ma'am, don't call them and let them know we're here because it's supposed to be a surprise for John. When you're wanting to share good news with a former football player on a Sunday during playoffs, <laughs> NFL playoffs, you pretty much know they're going to be somewhere watching 
the game. What's up? Oh my gosh. Hey, I think that's a knock you've been waiting for, isn't it? Are you serious, Dave? Can you come on outside, buddy? Uh, I've always said it. It's not that big of a thing. But get get Linda and your family out here, would you? I'm not allowed to hug you, but I'll hug you later, OK? John, for the past seven years, I've called you and said, I hope I can call you again next year with better news. This is the year. So it is my great privilege, on behalf of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, to welcome you to Canton, Ohio and to thank you for all that you've done for the game, for all that you're gonna do for the game. And I promise you that we will keep your legacy alive forever. Oh, David, that means the world. It means the world you're here. Thank you to all of you. Thanks to all of you guys for always being there for me. And you know, I thought I always had great perspective that, you know what, I, 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 uh, I gave it all I had on the field and whether I made it or not, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. It's not going to change my life, but my gosh, this feels life changing right now. <laughs> so, this is unbelievable. That's the way we want and, it to uh, be. Yeah. And I this just... year's a little bit different because we can't have you all in the hotel and the whole deal and go around yeah. and knock on the door. So, we thought we'd come knock on the uh, door. For you to take the time to come, that's unbelievable. <laughs> well, I, I will tell you, I don't think there will ever be a better representative for a gold jacket than you. Well, thank you. And, you know, you've been a Buccaneer, uh, you've been a Bronco. They both take great pride in you, but you're now you're on a team with Red Grange and Otto Graham, and Sammy Ball. <laughs> uh, this is a team that you can't be cut from, you can't be traded from. As uh, Deacon Jones said, you can't even die from this team. Uh, <laughs> this team is forever, brother. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> You know, what's crazy is we were in here getting ready to watch the games and everybody was saying, would you just sit down? And, and I was very anxious for some reason. I had already packed and, and uh, you know, almost sent something was up and then um, that loud knock, <laughs> like, like someone was knocking our ass down. I really have over the years had to come to peace with whether this happens or not. I'm proud of what I was able to do on the field. And, to finally get the knock, it's unbelievable. And to hear the numbers, I've heard them before, but I think when all of a sudden you're joining that club, it means a little something extra. <laughs> oh, it was so cool. I mean, just to see his face, uh, see how surprised he was. It's meant the world to him and his family, and it was so deserved and um, couldn't have happened to a better person. We certainly know him as an amazing human being, a great general manager. And I mean, this is a testament to all of his hard work in the NFL and can't be happier for, for a guy like John. Let me introduce you to Hall of Famer, John Lynch. In Palm Springs, California, the Hall's next honoree is a renowned head coach who led the Raiders to Super Bowl glory. Laurie is the youngest coach in the AFC, the youngest overall in the NFL. In terms of postseason winning percentage of coaches who have appeared in at least 10 playoff games, he ranks number two all time. I'm proud of you. You guys are great. You guys are great. Coach, I got something to say to you on behalf of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I want to welcome you to Canton, Ohio. We are going to guard your legacy forever. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm usually that lost for words, but, I'm, <laughs> but I've been in pro football over 60 years. It's just an honor to be in that room, knowing that you're going to be there forever. I'm not going in by myself. I'm going in with my relatives, yeah. my family, and my Raider Nation family. I'm just so proud of you and proud of this moment. And it's, it means so much to me, as you know. My mom's going to be crying pretty soon. <laughs> What a great sport this is. Yeah. How can you not love this game? How can you not love it? It's been a, it's been a great journey for me. Uh, you know, I, and it was, every journey has some roadblocks. You know, I'm not the only guy that started out, you know, in, in the low income and parents were not very wealthy and things of that nature, but we all are driven by something, but you have to have the passion for what you're doing. It was awesome, man, because, you know, leading up to it, a lot of messages about Tom Flores, whether it be Twitter or Instagram, Tom Flores deserves to be in. You know, people would, you know, run his stats down and what he did in the silver and black. 
And so, you know, for, for him to get the call, man, was, was, was awesome, especially for Raider Nation. It was really a special moment, two Raiders at the same time. From the silver and black to America's team, David Baker is at the star in Dallas to change the life of a legendary cowboy. Touchdown, Drew Pearson. Who does he go to in the toughest of situations? Drew Pearson. What a player, and maybe the best playoff receiver of all time. Roger takes the snap. Down the near sideline for Drew Pearson. Pearson makes the catch at the five. Touchdown! Second here. Why you thank Drew? Oh my God! Brother, I know you're not here to, to tell me hi. <laughs> With the help of two guys who love you, I want to welcome you to Canton, Ohio, which will be uh, your home for the rest of time. Man, I appreciate you coming here and being here in person to tell me this because I've always wanted this, okay, for a long time. I promise I'll live up to what the Hall of Fame is all about and all those great guys that make up the Hall of Fame. And now you're giving me a chance at immortality. If you surround yourself with successful people, then you have a chance to be a success yourself. Drew Pearson, in the eyes of the Cowboys and our fans, has always been a Hall of Famer. He uh, came from a free agent to uh, a Hall of Famer, and I don't think there's anybody that you would talk to that wouldn't say that Drew Pearson deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. When your teammates tell you that you deserve this, you should have been in, you know, that's the highest honor that you could uh, uh, get and of respect because those are the guys that played with you. So, uh, yeah, I've heard from a lot of people and I appreciate everybody. Uh, the most asked question is, uh, is my bus going to have an afro or not? And I will have an afro on my bus because that's what I had when I played. At that time, it was the biggest afro in NFL history. So it deserves to be in the Hall of Fame for sure. Our goal was to allow David to walk in, knock on the door and do what he does. Oh my gosh. And that we would capture it as best we could. For any storyteller, it's a big responsibility when another human being allows you to capture um, a very vulnerable moment in their life. And these are very vulnerable moments. As David Baker likes to say, life-changing moments that we're, we're capturing. And we don't take that lightly. When you do what you do with all of your heart, you put all of your heart and soul into something and you do it better than most people when the group that represents the best to have ever done that thing comes to you and says, we want you to be part of our family too. It's quite an honor. And I'm honored to have had the opportunity to travel around with David in, in the hall and the network, capturing those moments and, and sharing that story with America. Thank you for joining us on this Hall of Fame knock on the door journey. I hope you can see that it's all about their journey. It's all about football, and it's all about family. Right now, I'm getting back on a jet and heading to Canton, where on August 5th through the 9th, we're going to have the greatest gathering in football ever. See you there. <laughs>